Hello everyone, Dan here from the Next Issue Podcast. On today's video, I'll be ranking the best picture nominees for the Oscars. The Oscars are occurring this weekend. Uh, so I'm going to go over uh, ranking the best picture nominees, at least the ones that I've seen. I haven't seen all of them, unfortunately. And I know that's shame on me, but it is 10 films. Uh, but I've seen most of them, uh, so we'll do that. So let's go rank these films, and then you guys let me know what you think of these films, what you think of these rankings. All right, here are all the nominees uh, for that. So I'll start with saying this. Uh, I haven't seen three of these films. The Zone of Interest, Four Things, and Anatomy of a Fall. I haven't been able to watch those. Uh, I think they're finally all out on streaming or on video on demand, but they're not really available on streaming, and I just haven't gone out of the way. Uh, I hear very good things about all of them. Uh, expe- uh, I will say the zone of interest, I hear that it's a very specific type of film, uh, that it's very quiet. There's not a lot of moment. So I think that one may be the one that I'm just like kind of lost on. Uh, but if you've seen any of those films, let me know. So I'll be ranking the rest of them one through seven, since there are 10 and I've only seen seven. Uh, now, at number seven, we at, we have uh, Maestro. This is the film directed by Bradley Cooper. Uh, and I think overall, this was a, a really interesting film. It's not my favorite of the bunch. Um, I think I gave it a 3.5 average score on Rotten Tom- on, uh, on Letterboxd. Uh, and I think, well, I think the performances are very strong. The film is just a little bit weirdly paced for me. There's just some stuff that feels like it's gone. It goes on a little bit too long. I think Bradley Cooper did a great job. I think the performances are great. The music is beautiful. Uh, and sometimes, and the film looks fantastic. So this is by no means a bad film. It's just when compared to the rest of the, uh, when compared to the rest of them, that's kind of where it falls on. So, uh, At number six, we have American Fiction. This is the film that I've seen most recently out of the bunch. Uh, Jeffrey Wright does some amazing work. Like, I hope he gets the recognition he deserves. Uh, But it's just really fun. It's it's a comedy. It has something to say. Sometimes a lot of those films just kind of, like, get swept under the rug because people maybe don't want to see that kind of stuff. But it's it's still very nuanced. There's like I said, it's very interesting. It's a really interesting concept as well. Uh, so, and number five, we have the holdovers. And I will say this: one through five are like just so close. If you go look at my letterbox rankings for one through five, you'll see that they're all very close. Like this is is hard to pick. Uh, but the holdovers comes in at number five. Uh, Paul Giamatti does some really, really amazing stuff. I love the story. You know, it's a coming of age, but it's also about found family. Uh, It's beautifully shot. It it has that little bit of like grit from like a movie from maybe the 70s, Uh, the period piece aspect of it. Uh, And yeah, just overall amazing, amazing watch. Uh, I I believe this could be a new holiday classic. Uh, It is it is a bit sad, but I think it's a good kind of sad. So. Now, at number four, we have Past Lives. I love this film. This film is just about following a few people in a moment of their lives. Just a quick snapshot. uh, And it just has the most beautiful dialogue. uh, Great performances. Also, heartbreaking. Once again, like a lot of these films, they're just very heartbreaking. uh, But it's still very beautiful to see. So, really Really enjoyed that. Really enjoyed this film. Uh, I cannot recommend it enough. Uh, Now, at number three, when we are getting to like the cream of the crop, the top of the top, uh, like I said, these films are so close in ranking. uh, But I have to do Killers of the Flower Moon. Uh, Just Martin Scorsese and, and the cast and everyone involved in this film just delivered a masterpiece in filmmaking, a masterpiece in storytelling uh, with just such beautiful performances. This is a film that is difficult to watch because of the subject matter, uh, but it all, it brings it all and, and just leaves the audience to really, it brings you in as part of it and it gets you involved. And I think that's what really kept me hooked on this film. I really, really loved it. It has some beautiful music. 
uh, like I said, great performances and just an exploration of a culture that, uh, you know, has been so taken for granted, taken advantage of. And it's just, you know, it has a lot to say and it says it in, in a way that it's unapologetic, uh, but also in a way that is just full of a, a beautiful message, uh, but also a very stern message. And I think, uh, yeah, this, this film is just fantastic. Um, not still not my favorite Scorsese film, but I think this is something that just really, really hits the mark. Um, all right. At number two, and this is, this is more like one a and one B, but at number two, it's Oppenheimer, uh, Christopher Nolan's just his, there's a lot for this film, not only the film itself, but the moment in time of it, like the hype building up to all this. Um, yeah. And I guess I could, I'm, I'm going to talk about films one and two in the same breath because it was all part of the same moment. But yeah, as you probably surmise, Barbie is my number one film. Uh, and both of these films, they just, they are an ensemble achievement. They are, uh, they are a masterclass in what a good director can do with talent, with freedom. Uh, and of course they're very different films. But also, they're not, right? They're cultural moments. Like I said, they, it was just... I feel like these films benefited greatly from playing up next to each other. Uh, the moment in society, the internet taking hold of it, the memes. Uh, but once you get look past all that, you have an exploration of a deeply flawed character and a deeply flawed man and a terrible moment in time in Oppenheimer. And then you also have an exploration of society and the patriarchy, and then also what it's like to be a woman uh, in Barbie. So like both of these films just go all out. Uh, they have such, each of them looks beautiful in their own way. Uh, they have such great performances. They have these moments that will live in my mind forever, right? whether it's America Ferrara's speech uh, or the scene after Oppenheimer has to deliver a speech after the bomb's been triggered uh, or just Barbie finding out what it's like in the world. Like just all these moments that are just amazing, amazing. So yeah, those those two films, like I said, I think they really are one and two. Um, but if I have to rank them, Oppenheimer is at number two. Uh, Barbie is a number one, but to me, they really are like one A and one B. Um, but for the purpose of this video, I do have them ranked. Uh, you can find my list on Letterbox. My Letterbox is uh, at Echo Spider. You can find the link in the description. Uh, so let me know your ranking. Uh, let's go over the rankings real quick. Once again, I haven't seen uh, the last three films Anatomy of Fall, Poor Things, and The Son of Interest. Uh, so they are ranked in the the ranking for those is how much do I want to watch the film? Uh, so I think Anatomy of the Fall is definitely the first one. Uh, but yeah, Maestro at number seven, American Fiction at number six, The Holdovers at number five, Past Lives at number four, Killers of the Flower Moon at number three, and then it slots 1A and 1B, uh, Oppenheimer and Barbie. So there you have it. That's my ranking of the films. Uh, I'm very excited for the Oscars. I think it's going to be a really interesting ceremony. So uh, let me know what you thought of the ranking. Let me know what films were your favorites. Uh, maybe something that missed out on the Best Picture nomination. I think Godzilla Minus One should have been a Best Picture nominee. Uh, but that's just me. Uh, I love that film. My favorite film of the last year. Uh, so if you have seen any of these films, if you have your own list, let me know down in the comments. In the comments, make sure to follow me in Letterbox. I'll follow you back so we can chat about films and I can see what else you're watching. Uh, so as always, thank you for watching, everyone. Remember to share, like, subscribe. Hit the bell so you know when we go live. That is most Saturdays, 10 a.m. Central Standard Time. Stay tuned. We have more comic reviews, trailer reactions, TV recaps, all that fun stuff here in the channel. Thanks for watching, everyone. Bye.